I'm Jeremy Franklin. Welcome to a special edition of WNL Sports Weekly. As Washington and Lee student athletes prepare for fall term exams, we thought we'd go in a different direction on this week's show. Today, you'll meet three of the people who work behind the scenes to help give WNL one of the best Division III athletics programs around. Joining me on the show will be Eddie Irvin, the facilities coordinator for the Warner Center, as well as head athletic trainer Josh Williamson. But first, we'll speak with Tommy Mays, the stadium facilities and equipment coordinator. Tommy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. With your position, which facilities at WNL do you oversee? All the outdoor facilities, all the outdoor sports facilities, Captain Dick Smith Field, Watt Field, two practice fields at uh, Liberty Hall, um, Wilson Field, Alumni, which is in a practice field, and track uses it for throwing, javelin, discus, hammer, that type of stuff. Take us through a typical game day at one of the outdoor game fields. Uh, game day, say at Watfield for men or women's soccer, we started, it's pretty much a weekly, goes on all week. You know, you got a game on Tuesday, you come in on Monday, make sure we have all the grass mowed, the restrooms are all cleaned up, all the supplies are ready. And seven o'clock in the morning on game day, they usually go up and we check the scoreboard, the PA system, make sure all that stuff's working, make sure the field's been painted, ready to go, goals are in place. And that all they got to do is show up and play. What's your relationship like with WNL athletes and coaches? It's very nice. Kids are awesome. Coaches are, we have a lot of fun with the coaches. During the week, come game day, it's, you got to leave those guys alone, let them do their thing. They're in their own little zone, and they don't want to hear a bunch of goofing around that we normally do. But the kids are just awesome. They come in as freshmen, they're scared to death. The first years, I guess I should call them. They come in, they're a little, a little scared. We try to get them to relax, cut up with them, give them nicknames. and They get to know us a little better and they're a little more relaxed and have a lot of fun. What was it like to be involved with the football team during the ODAC championship season this fall? Well, we got off to a rough start. And everyone's, you know, wondering what's going on. and. They finally got things clicking and it just turned out awesome. You can see the kids get better each week, progressively just crescendo to the championship. It's unbelievable. Tommy, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Thanks, Jim. With me now is Eddie Irvin, Facilities and Equipment Coordinator at the Warner Center. Eddie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. What are the responsibilities of your job? to ensure the, the cleanliness and the proper uh, appearance of the athletic facilities, indoor athletic facilities when athletes, uh, visiting athletes, prospective athletes, their parents come in uh, to ensure that games and are uh, prepared and ready to go, to ensure that uniforms and practice laundry, that kind of thing's ready to, to go at, on game day than to uh, just be a support person and try to be there and, and meet the needs of the students as they're here. I think most people who come to the Warner Center for a basketball game think all of that stuff magically happens, that the gym is just ready to go. But describe for us, if you would, the preparations for a home hoops contest. It's funny you'd say that because we had an employee who came to work a few years ago who had played basketball and thought the same thing. And uh, we had, you have to put the benches out, uh, that the number of, of seats per bench varies from sport to sport. Men's basketball and women's basketball are different because of squad sizes. Uh, scores table has to be put out uh, and set up. The score clock, PA systems put in place and, and checked for uh, proper operation. Then uh, bleachers are set up for uh, spectator seating. We greet and uh, show the visiting teams to their locker rooms and make sure that they understand where the, the training room is and, and that kind of thing. So uh, we try to, try, try to be on top of it and be there when they get there. As of this athletics year, there's a new court at the Warner Center. <clears throat> what kind of feedback have you gotten on the new floor? Everything's been positive. 
Uh, officials have come in and remarked about uh, what a beautiful floor it is. Spectators have, uh, visiting spectators have remarked about what a great improvement it is. Uh, particularly our parents and athletes have remarked about what a difference it's made. So it, it's, it's been a real, I think it's an asset and be an asset down the road to our, to our athletes. What's your favorite memory from working with WNL Athletics? That one's been one I've been running through in my mind because long time here and um, I've come back and I think since my goal when I came to work at Washington Lee was to try to make a positive influence on students while they're here. Uh, one of our athletes, two sport athletes that I had not had a particularly uh, strong support role with, one morning on parents weekend I heard my name yelled and I turned around and he said, hey Eddie, come here. And I said, yeah, what do you need? And he said, I want my mom to meet you and I want you to meet my mom. To me, the, the fact that the students thought enough of what we do to, to do that was impressive and, and noteworthy. Eddie, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. With me now is head athletic trainer Josh Williamson. Josh, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. What inspired your interest in athletic training? What inspired me? I, I can't say that there is one particular thing, uh, but a series of things that really inspired me to go into athletic training and kind of seek it out as a profession. Um, in my involvement in sports, there's a, you know, a long history of just being involved with uh, different athletic teams and stuff that I did as a, as a uh, high school student. And then even in college and some of the competitive things I did there. And uh, there was one time that, I, that I've dealt with injuries and, and really you kind of go through that stuff. I didn't have any athletic trainers around and uh, there was one point where I got sent um, to a clinic and we were doing rehab and, and uh, met an athletic trainer and then realized that they were a part of what, what all they did and, and how they uh, helped me. Uh, really got me thinking that, you know, I was interested in a career in, in something with health, something health related but also had a very strong interest in sports. So when I was taking a look at it, what really fit, fit the bill with that was, was athletic training. So that's, you know, there was some, some impact from an athletic trainer, but also from, from my interest in sports. So that's how I really got into it. You're the head of a four-person department. There are 23 varsity athletic teams here at Washington and Lee. How do you meet the challenges of covering all the sports, especially during the overlap between the fall and winter, winter and spring? Yeah, I mean, there, there are times of the year where Pretty much all of the teams are going and, and there's practices and events going on and it can be very difficult uh, to, to provide coverage having a staff of four. But we take a look at it by a numbers thing. We take a look at location. So we know how many teams are going on, what location they're going to be uh, practicing and playing at, and then we also take into account the risk of the sport. So in taking a look at, at um, the location, we need to have somebody in these different locations that the, uh, the practices and uh, competitions occur. We also take a look at that risk. If it's a high risk sport, we need to have somebody there. And we base where each of us are going to be on those, those decisions. And really, when you take a look at it, we're able to cover everything quite well. Athletic training, sports medicine is always changing. I know you're learning new methods for dealing with various injuries and so forth. How do you keep up with all that? Well, you know, there's a lot of different events that you can uh, partake in. I mean, uh, each year around June is uh, the National Athletic Trainers Association Conference. Um, there's other conferences and events, you know, I mean, we have, uh, we're fortunate to have some, some rich programs in this area uh, uh, that we can take advantage of, like the UVA um, uh, connection, the Virginia Tech connection of athletic trainers there. They usually uh, will put on some different um, programs and learning opportunities. There's also a lot of publications and stuff that come out. So. Staying in tune with, with some of the current trends and movements, I mean, it's an ever-evolving process, and, and to stay abreast to all those different things, um, there are things out there that uh, we can take advantage of, learning conferences and, and uh, printed material that we read and, and, and uh, stay in touch with what the current trends are. What's the most rewarding part about working with Division Three athletes? Uh, the most rewarding part, I mean, there's a lot of rewards from it. Um, there's a big difference between 
uh, some of the demands at uh, Division One, Division Two versus Division Three, and uh, I'm very fortunate to work at uh, the university that I'm at. You know, Washington and Lee's been great. It's a great atmosphere. It's got great kids. Um, I think D3 athletics, the focus is a little bit different. You know, it's not like D1. I mean, the focus isn't just on the sports. There's a large athletic demand or uh, academic demand. And I think that balance is an interesting thing, and I think the people that that, uh, that balance brings uh, brings into these, um, you know, the sports teams and, and uh, the academic institution, it's an interesting group of people. It's great to be able to work with that many different people. Josh, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Again, our thanks to Josh Williamson, Eddie Irvin, and Tommy Mays for joining us on the show, and especially for all the excellent work that they do on behalf of our student athletes and coaches. For WNL Sports Weekly, I'm Jeremy Franklin. Thanks for watching.